going here. Okay. Am I recording? Yes, I am recording. Okay. So what is the ego? This is from A Course in Miracles, a section in, in amongst the lessons. So the ego is idolatry, the sign of limited and separated self, born in a body doomed to suffer and to end its life in death. One of the, and I'll just make a comment on that, one of the things with experiencing oneself as in separation, like if I experience time, if I experience a, me and you, like a limited self, and I'm in a body, there'll usually be, if I'm attached to it, there'll usually be fear of the body getting old and dying, fear of not having enough money, not getting enough, um, not getting enough love from people. All of this stuff will happen probably at, uh, unless it's totally transcended. And the idea of being separated from the universe totally dissolves. So it is, the, it is the will, that's the will with a small w, or I believe the ego will, that sees the, the will, uh, that's the, if you like, the will of God, yeah, as enemy and takes form in which it is denied. So when there's any resistance to the now, uh, or there's any identification with being limited or wanting things to happen in the future or the past or to past things to be different, if there's any kind of um, individuality going on and one doesn't, uh, re hasn't released all of this, shall we say, limitation, of being a body, of being in time, of wanting this and that, or being afraid of this or that, then uh, one is in fact opposing the will of God, because one is not one, if you like, with God and the universe. So the ego, uh, the ego is uh, the proof that strength is weak and love is fearful. Uh, life is really death, and what opposes God alone is true. And this is the, the want of the ego to be in separation and sort of play around in this universe as if it's the creator. So the ego is insane. In fear, it stands beyond the everywhere, apart from all, in separation from the infinite. So I really like this. Uh, in fear, the ego stands beyond the everywhere. So when one, is it, when one feels identified as being a body, in time and separated from other people uh, and other animals and, and everything in the world, then as it says, in fear, it stands beyond the everywhere. It doesn't experience the, the now of being one with everything, beyond thinking, beyond a body, it just the experience, if you like, of the infinite presence of, of being happy now, uh, beyond time, beyond bodies. Uh, it's, like, um, it's like an infinite experience. So in its insanity, he thinks it has become a victor over God himself. And in its terrible autonomy, it sees the will of God has destroyed. The, the will of God uh, has been destroyed. It dreams of punishment and trembles at the figures of, in its dreams. Its enemies who seek to murder it before it can ensure its safety by attacking them. This for me is like when you get a resentment uh, about anything, the universe or a person or a grievance. It's, it's, it's a deeper unconscious fear that um, you need to, you know, you need to control the situation or them to, to run away from fear or, or, or get something that's symbolic of, of safety or love or happiness. So it's dreams, so in a way, the world does seem difficult. So the Son of God is egoless. So what it's talking about here, I mean, the true oneness with God in the universe and the infinite now, there, there cannot be an ego or any sense of limitation. Uh, uh, what can we, he know of madness and the death of God when he abides in him? What can he know of sorrow and of suffering when he lives in eternal joy? Um, some higher levels of consciousness I, I've heard people share are, you just feel an infinite, um, an infinite unfolding of joy and everything miraculously happening that's needed. And one isn't really in the future or the past, and there seems to be an exquisite joy of life. So that's more when one is out of being in future and past and needing to control things, to be afraid of things or, or to get things to bring more joy. Like when you're in those infinite states, you're not thinking about, you're looking forward to your donut later on in the evening. 
So carrying on with the course, what can he know of fear and punishment, of sin and guilt, of hatred and attack, when all there is surrounding him is everlasting peace, forever conflict-free and undisturbed, in deepest silence and tranquility? To know reality is not to see the ego and its thoughts, its works, its acts, its laws and its beliefs, its dreams, its hopes, its plans for its salvation and the cost and, and the cost belief in it entails. So this is the thing, if you're indulging in thoughts and beliefs and future and dreams, uh, and like when I can eat that donut in the evening, I'll be happy and get my salvation, then there is a cost for that because it, it creates a sense of separation in the now, in that infinite presence of flow that I could be experiencing. So in suffering, the price for faith in it is so immense that crucifixion of the Son of God is offered daily at its darkened shrine, and blood must flow before the altar where its sickly followers prepare to die. There I'm saying, uh, it's quite strong languaging, but there it's just saying the more you're identified with limitation and, and, and limited programs and future and past and fears and desires, the, the, the more uh, dark the world seems. Yet one lily of forgiveness changes the darkness into light. The altar to illusions to the shrine of life itself, and peace will be restored forever to the holy minds which God created as his son, his dwelling place, his joy, his love completely his, completely one with him. That's from A Course in Miracles, uh, and uh, I'm going to stop.